In this video I'm going to be solving linear inequalities. I'm going to do two different types of examples. Um, one based on linear inequalities that are written in one variable. <clears throat> we will be solving these inequalities and then graphing the answer on a number line and also showing what it would look like in interval notation. The second example I will be doing is with linear inequalities in two variables. We'll have another example of that and I will show you how to um, graph those solutions on a coordinate plane. But before we get started, there's some points that you probably need to memorize for inequalities, um, especially if you're getting ready to go into a test, maybe an SAT test or a chapter test that might be covering inequalities. Um, first thing that we need to memorize is if you are dealing with a less than or greater than symbol, then the points are not going to be included in your solution. So in a one variable system, that would mean you would need to use open dots or some people um, on a number line if you're trying to indicate that or get kids are ready for interval notation, it might be a curvy bracket. All right, if it's in interval notation, it would definitely be a curvy bracket. All right, if you are dealing with a less than or equal to or greater than or equal to symbol, then the points are going to be included in your solution. And in one variable, then that means we would have a closed dot or a square bracket. Um, when we get to the uh, linear inequalities in two variables, then we will readdress this. Um, now, the other thing that you need to remember, whenever you are solving an inequality, it works just like an equation. You can do all the exact same things. You can move things from one side of the equation to the other. You can divide. You can do inverse operations. But the thing you have to remember is that if you multiply or divide by a negative number, you have to flip that inequality symbol. And that is the only difference. And it only happens whenever you multiply or divide by a negative number. All right, so just some things that need to probably be memorized going into any test that you might be taking with um, inequalities. All right, um, for this two-step inequality here, all right, it's going to be solved just like a two-step equation would be. I need to isolate that x on the left-hand side of the equation. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at that 4 and realize I need to add 4 to both sides. So I'm going to add 4 and add 4. The 4s on the left-hand side are going to cross out. That's going to leave me with a negative 2x is greater than negative 4 or negative 8 plus 4 will give me the negative 4 there. Now continuing to solve, negative 2 times x, I need to divide both sides by that negative 2. And here I am dividing by a negative number, so I have to implement this rule. Divide by a negative 2, divide by a negative 2. The negative 2's cross out. So now in this next step, when I write it, I need to flip that inequality symbol. So x is less than a negative divided by a negative is positive. So that would be a positive 2. All right, now that would be an algebraic solution to that linear inequality in one variable. And your answer then would be x is less than 2. And a lot of times, you will also need to graph this. All right, if you're going to graph it, you graph linear inequalities in one variable on a number line. So I'm going to draw a number line here. I'm not going to do the entire number line. Usually, I tell my students, whatever answer you get right there, that probably needs to be in the center of your number line. That way, you don't have to draw a really big one. A um, couple numbers on the right should be sufficient, and a couple numbers then on the left would be sufficient. Okay, now, this solution says that x is less than 2, which means all the numbers that are less than 2 will make that inequality sentence true. All right, so all of them, but not 2, because it's just plain less than 2. So here's where point's not included. That 2 is not included in the solution because it's less than 2. So I can have 1.9999 as a solution, 1.9, 1.5, I could have 0, negative 1, negative 2. Any number that's less than 2 is going to be a solution, but not 2 itself. So on a number line, um, that would indicate then that I need to put an open dot on the 2, indicating that it's going to be every number up to 2, but not including 2. And it'll be all the other numbers forever to negative infinity. So I usually have my students shade in an arrow there and shade in on the number line so that we recognize that absolutely every number that is less than 2 is going to be a solution. Now, if you also needed to write this in interval notation, depending on the course you're in or the requirements, picturing this number line, thinking of this number line, negative infinity would be to the far, far left-hand side. 
every number all the way to negative infinity is going to be a solution for this. So if I were to write my answer in interval notation, then it would be curvy bracket, negative infinity, all the way up to 2. But here again, I do not want to include the 2, so I would use a curvy bracket right there. All right, the only difference would be in this whole entire problem if I had greater than or equal to, if it had the equal to part, the points would be included, so there would be an equal to part right here. I would have that filled in, and I would have a square bracket there indicating that the 2 was included. Okay, so that is one example worked out of a linear inequality in one variable. Okay, now let's take a look at these inequalities in two variables. All right, we are going to need a coordinate plane because that's how we're going to graph it, and hopefully my coordinate plane is going to be big enough that we are going to be able to see that. In this example, I've got y is less than 2x minus 3. Pretty simple slope-intercept form, but it is in clearly in two variables because there I have an x and there I have a y. All right, with this being in um, slope-intercept form, my slope is 2, reviewing from linear any, uh, linear equations. The slope is 2, and my y-intercept is a negative 3. So if I were to go and graph this, I would go to my y-axis and put a dot at negative 3. And then I would run a slope of 2, which would be up 2 and to the right 1. Up 2 and to the right 1. And you could do that several times if you wanted to be really accurate on how you place your line down there. Now. Going back to the symbols here, I have a less than symbol. And if you recall, less than or greater than, either one, meant that the uh, points are not included in the graph. So when I graph this line, the points that actually fall on this line are not going to be included. They will not make that inequality true. So then I'm going to want to make it a dotted line. So when I connect these points, I'm going to make it a dotted line. That is because of the less than symbol. Okay, If it was less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to, then I would make that a solid line because I would want to include those points. All right, now, every time you do um, inequalities and you graph them on a coordinate plane, you have to shade to find out where all of the answers are because there's not just going to be one, there's going to be several. All right, so what I usually like to to tell my students is if your line does not go through 0, 0, all right, then that's the point we want to pick because it has coordinates of 0, 0, which means my x coordinate is 0 and my y coordinate is 0. And that makes the math very, very simple. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take that point 0, 0 and I'm going to test it in this inequality. If it makes that inequality true, then I know that not only this point, but all the points on this side of the line will make that inequality true. If I plug in 0, 0, and it makes this inequality false, then that means all of the points on this side would make it false, so I would not want to shade there, but instead I would want to shade on the opposite side of the line because those would make it true. So over here I'm going to show some algebra to show our testing that 0, 0 point. Okay, keeping in mind that the first coordinate there is the x, the second coordinate there is the y. So I'm going to plug 0 in on both of those locations. 0 in for y is less than, and I'm asking myself, is that true? Is that less than 2 times, plugging 0 in for that x, minus 3. Working this side out, 2 times 0 minus 3 is going to give me a negative 3. 0 is less than negative 3. When I get to that point, I'm going to stop, I'm going to look at it, and I'm going to ask myself, is that a true statement? 0 is less than negative 3. Obviously, um, no, that is not. This is a false statement. All right, which means this point does not make that inequality true. So if that point does not, none of these points will make it true. So I must shade the opposite side of the line because all of the points on the opposite side of the line will make that inequality true. All right, so um, two really quick examples of how you go about solving linear inequalities. One example in one variable, the second example here in two variables. Nice little summary if you're going into a test on inequalities or maybe even say the SAT test just as a little refresher. Definitely thanks for watching. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up and be sure and share with your friends. Thanks.